I came out from under my rock the other day, and I saw the light! I saw the light! Here I've been adding a coat of finish to a cabinet, a credenza, a tabletop, and I let it dry. And I come back and I add another coat of finish, and I let it dry. And I come back and I add another layer a finish, and I let it dry. And I come back and I do a scuff sand to get rid of all the little nibs and imperfections, and I put on a finish coat, and I let it dry. Hello, my name's Roger Kugler. This is Working at Woodworking Podcast, where I am hopefully providing you some information that will help you start your own woodworking business full-time, part-time, or maybe you've been into business for a while and I can provide some information to make you more money. And that's what we're going to talk about today, UV cured finishes. If you remember in episode 55, is a franchise right for you, we talked about Enhance Wood Finishing franchise. This is the company that can come into your home and redo your kitchen cabinets, strip down, maybe apply a stain, change the color, and put on a new finish. What's unique about them is that they use UV cured finishes. That means they're not stinking up your kitchen for three days. In fact, some kitchens they could do in a day because the finish dries instantly. So I was really intrigued by this. And, of course, I turned to YouTube and started watching videos. And I watched this one video where they are refinishing guitars, or finishing guitars. And now this is a professional operation. Now they were taking a guitar body and applying what they called a UV gel. And in essence, this is a grain filler. And they were applying the filler using a, you know, a little squeegee, filling it in just like we would do with a, a tabletop, and then taking it into the booth and using a UV light and running that light all over the guitar body. The grain filler was cured. It was done. It was dry. They took it back, used a series of, you know, sandpapers, abrasives, sanded that down, took it back into the booth, used a spray gun and applied a top coat to it, took the light unit and shone it all over the guitar body, twisting and turning to get in all the nooks and crannies, took that back, grabbed a greenie, you know, a green scotch Brite pad, rubbed over everything, took it back into booth, and used a an accent top coat color, you know, the starburst effect, and went over the the edges of the guitar, used the light, took it back. It was dry. It was done. The finishing was done. The only thing they had to do was to add the hardware and ship the thing out. It was that fast. I have to know more. So I jumped into Google and came across a several websites, links in the show notes below, and just really had some fun. So what is UV cured finishes? Well, these things dry in minutes, not hours. We've been using UV cured finishes for decades, 30, maybe 40 years. So why haven't I heard of these things before? Well, primarily they've been in industry. And here's a kind of a short list of uses of UV cured finishes, safety, first products, stinger missiles, Guitars such as Taylor, Martin, Fender, Rickenbacker, John Schur, Patrick Engel, uh, I don't even know what that one is, Perfume Closures by Avon and Revlon, don't know what those are, Estee Lauder, never heard of them, Gun Stocks, Thompson Center Firearms, heard of them, Restaurant Furniture, Countertops, Automobile Industry, Collision Repair, UV Primers for Bodywork, High Durability Overcoats, Pull cues like Jacoby, executive jet interiors such as Gulfstream, aircraft windshields, earrings, fishing lures, belt buckles, beer cans, flashlight reflectors, plumbing fixtures, snowboards, skis, lighting fixtures, toys, combination locks, bicycles such as Cannondale, cabinets, 
blister packs, metal drums, truck bodies, mandolins, ukuleles, and sailboat masts. At least that's what I read on the uv3.com website. So that sounds all well and good. They didn't even mention the medical industry, which uses this stuff a lot. What about us, mere mortal woodworkers? Kitchen cabinet refinishing, one day. Flooring finishing, in one day. Restaurant work, bar tops, tables, seating, one day. Well, probably one night, because you could work overnight after closing, and the restaurant could be open the next morning. Boom. Niche market, office furniture, one day. Or there again, one night. Products, home decor, one day. Furniture repair, one day, or rather hours, maybe even minutes. Somebody could bring you a broken stretcher. You could fix that literally in minutes and let them take that home. Hmm. Tabletops, same day refinishing, including stain and grain filler. Wow. So how does all this work? Well, before we get too far into the weeds, let's understand a little bit about UV light and these coatings. Basically, UV cured finishes use UV light spectrum to cause the molecules in the finish to crosslink. Crosslinking to us is curing, allowing the finish to cure. This happens with oil-based finishes, varnishes, shellacs, lacquers via evaporation because there is some type of a carrier in our can of varnish, a VOC, mineral spirits, alcohol, lacquer thinner, whatever, that when that carrier carries the solids onto the finish, i.e. we spray it on, we brush it on, we rag it on, and then that carrier evaporates. What's left is the solids. And as that starts to lose the evaporation, the cross-linking of molecules, the bonding of molecules together into a tight chain starts to occur. Now, this could take hours in the case of shellac. It could take days in the case of an oil finish, even weeks sometimes. But by using UV light, we can excite those molecules to speed up that cross-linking so that, in essence, the finish cures instantly. So what exactly is UV light? Well, we've all seen it. Well, actually, not really, but it's all around us. We've seen the effects of UV light. Tell me you have never been sunburned. Tell me you've never seen a nice bright red truck that in a few years is now eh, kind of an off pink. The draperies in your house may have been a brilliant, vibrant color. Okay, maybe your grandmother's house, but now they're like, ooh, those need to be replaced. Artwork. Artwork fades. The colors just kind of mute out. Wood. We are by no means immune to this. We work with a lot of photoreactive wood species. Cherry, mahogany. You want to get depressed? Spend some big money for snake wood. Well, if you could even get it now. And that really incredibly intricate grain pattern of the reds and the browns and the almost blacks. Yeah, leave that sitting out for two or three weeks. It's a dark piece of wood. You can't tell it from that it's snake wood from anything. Rosewoods, also very much like that. Huh, maybe I should do a podcast on photoreactive wood species. That might be as popular as my Sawtooth Geometry podcast episode. Generally, woods, darker woods get lighter and lighter woods get darker. You know, look at pine. Pine is a very light wood whenever it's freshly cut. But look at a hundred-year-old piece of pine furniture. It is a rich, dark color. Now, cherry and walnut, they're kind of weird. They can kind of go different directions. Generally, walnut will get deeper and and more rich in in tone. Uh, Likewise with, with cherry. So there are three types of UV lights. They break this down by the wavelength of the light ray. You have UVA, UVB, and UVC. You've heard of these these before. Your sunglasses will say something like blocks, you know, UVA, B, C. UVA is the one that gave us the infamous black light. 
of the 60s and 70s. Yeah, you remember that? The black light posters that you turned a black light on and scare the crap out of your parents? Yeah, that was a whole generational thing. UVB, again, sunburn, melanoma, not fun. Anders UVC, this is used for to kill germs. It can also damage your eyes. Photocoritis. If we look at the, the light spectrum, if you hold out your right hand, that's going to contain the infrared light spectrum. If you hold out your left hand, that's going to contain the UVC light spectrum. Right in the middle, where your eyes are, that's the visible light. So this is the, the, the spectrum that we are working with as far as the wavelength. Visible light is between about 400 and 700 nanometers. That's the length of the frequency of the wave. Really, 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 really tiny. And further to the left we go, the larger the wavelengths become and the more energy that those wavelengths carry. That's why UVC is so damaging to our, to our eyes. But what we're talking about as far as finishing is the UVA from about 315 to 400. Okay, enough of that. So the website I found was cureuv.com. That's a pretty good URL. So I, I called them up. They have a very good website. I called them up, talked to a lovely uh, gentleman named John. He's got a, a great Scottish accent. Um, the company is based out of Florida. They are totally 100% U.S. made. They make all of their equipment. They make all of their finishes. Now, Cure UV specializes, well, they specialize in everything, but one of their main focuses is guitars. John is a guitarist, and he's not afraid to tell you that. But they do all kinds of stuff. They work in all different industries. They work with the government. They work with the medical uh, community, uh, manufacturers. And you might have heard this little thing, you know, called COVID. Yeah, they were very deep into UV sanitation, filtration, and germ virus elimination. He said that it's been a very, very busy two years. Now, John and I talked pretty much at length and wonderful conversation. He, he really, you know, kind of upped my game here. He talked about a curing trifecta that you can do so many different things with UV cured finishes and adhesives. And you really kind of have to know what you're doing or at least know somebody who, like John, knows what they're doing. And so we can break this trifecta down into three things. Intensity, dosage, and wavelength. Now the intensity is simply the power that is used to generate the UV light. The dosage is that power over time measured in millijoules. And of course, everybody, you know, remembers that one watt over 10 second time duration is equal to one joule. Yeah, everybody. I mean, it's like what, eighth grade, you know, science class. Whew. And then, of course, the wavelength. And what they really specialize in, as far as what we're concerned with, is in the 365 to 410 nanometer wavelength, depending on the application. Now, these finishes are much different than what we are used to. We're used to grabbing a, a, a can of varnish, a can of polyurethane, cracking the lid, and brushing it on. One of the biggest differences, and I had no idea about this until our conversation with John, is that UV finishes are 100% solids. Now, your can of varnish may only be 30% solids. 40%. Generally speaking, the more money you spend for that, the more solids you get. The cheap stuff at the hardware store, yeah, 20% solids? Guess what the rest of it is? A carrier. Something like mineral spirits or alcohol, xylene, acetone. The chemical soup just goes on. But those are VOCs, volatile organic chemicals. Those are going to evaporate off. Not true with UV coatings. There are no VOCs in UV coatings. We've been relying upon evaporative curing for, well, centuries. No longer. We can use the power of UV light to cure our finishes. No VOCs? Hello, California. I was on Etsy 
the other night looking for something, and there's little notes. Cannot ship to California. Cannot ship to California. Cannot ship to California. You click the little thing, and it says, due to California you know, air pollution laws, this has too much VOCs to be shipped to California. So I, I asked John about this, and he just laughed and laughed and laughed. It's like, yeah, these are really popular in California because there's no VOCs. The other thing that I learned is that these things go on much thinner than what we are accustomed to. He's talking like a two mil layer. Now, typically, if you're laying on varnish with a brush or something, you can get four, five, six mils, you know, quite easily. But that is going on that's not cured because remember, those VOCs are going to burn off and that six mil layer is no longer six mil. But here, you get exactly what you put on. So he recommends recommends, you know, for guitars, about a two mil layer. How many coats? Mm, One, two, maybe three, but your build is so much greater than what we're used to that you arrive at your film thickness much faster than what we typically do with our evaporative finishes. Now, waterborne finishes, they have a little bit more advantage where they can carry those CO2, those, uh, those solids. They don't have as much VOC. They do have some. And so there's the, the, the big difference there. And of course, the obvious difference is one is fast drying, like fast drying polyurethane, eh, hours, versus instant drying, like seconds. Oh, one thing else John pointed out, you don't have to clean your spray gun as long as it's in like a metal cup because there's no light. These things don't react to light. Now, some finishes are actually designed to act with sunlight, so you'd want to make sure you have a metal cup. But he says most guitar finishers, manufacturers, they, they never clean their gun. <laughs> you, you don't have to. This stuff is not going to set up in your gun like the finishes that we are used to. So, why aren't we all using UV-cured finishes? Money. Yeah, this stuff is not cheap. Now, John sent me a, uh, a bid, uh, a quote, just for research purposes. <clears throat> <clears throat> to get the PowerShot Benchtop UV Cure System and enough finish for probably three years, a mere $4,000 with tax. Now, all the equipment that you will need is included, including PPE. PPE? Well, yeah, you're using high-intensity ultraviolet light. You have to protect yourself. You get a welding helmet. Now, granted, this welding helmet only has a number five glass in there where most welders will use something like a number eight or number ten, but still, it's a welding helmet. You also get coveralls because UV radiation. We've got to cover our skin. Probably not the thing to do while wearing shorts and flip-flops. You get gloves. I mean, you're head-to-toe covered. You're using high-intensity radiation, and you've got to protect yourself. You'll also need to furnish a respirator if you spray. I mean, anytime we spray anything, you should be wearing a respirator. The finish he recommends for most, like, furniture projects is what they call the wet lock. It sells for $250 a gallon. Yep, yep, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's break this down. That's $62.50 a quart. How much are you spending for a high-quality varnish? I do boats. I buy high-quality marine-grade spar varnish. Oh, I'm spending $35, $40. Easy. Now, the other thing about the solid content, if this is 100% solids versus my high-quality marine spar varnish, which is like 45, 55, someplace in there, percent solids, you know, from a solid standpoint, this is actually about the same price. So don't let the price of these finishes scare you. And if you've been using waterborne product, well, those are much more expensive than the, the traditional finishes. Now, if you're doing cabinets and floors, you may not want to use the, the, the wet look finish, but rather go to their waterborne coatings. Why? Because when you're doing a floor or cabinets, you might get absolutely every square millimeter 
of surface area exposed to the UV light. But if you don't, that particular area, it could be like up and under the toe kick. That will never, ever, ever, ever dry. It will never cure because it needs that UVA light spectrum. So for that, they modify the formula and give you something that will cure in the 400 to 410 nanometer range. Why? Sunlight. So even if you don't hit every single square inch of your cabinets or your floors, it will eventually dry. And it's probably in such an inconspicuous place that your customers are, are, are never going to, to notice that. So there, that's why, you know, the little light spectrum lecture earlier. So should you do this? Well, I did mention $4,000, didn't I? So what's the advantages here? Obviously, speed. That's the number one advantage. Dry time. Virtually zero. And something that John didn't mention, but I will, is rack space. If you have to do 37 kitchen cabinet doors, you need some space to hang those so that they can dry. Just imagine taking one cabinet door into your little spray booth, however you have that set up, spraying it using this light, taking it out, install the hinges, install it into the kitchen cabinets that you're building. Boom! Then you go back and you spray and cure the next door and the next door and the next door. Or maybe you, you start spraying and curing and you stack them up because the finish is dry. You don't have to invest in some elaborate drying rack system. And woe to anyone who's using the, the horizontal drying systems where you have to go back and do the backside. You're only finishing one side at a time. Oh, MG, do you know how much time that takes? I mean, we're not talking, you know, hours. We're talking days and weeks to do a, a full cabinet build or refinishing. So that rack space, that rack time, I mean, that's it's, it's literally eliminated. And that has got to be worth something. Number two advantage is the quality of the finish. These are really top-notch finishes. Now, they are technically plastic. It's a plastic resin. Welcome to the world. We were using resins, you know, four or five hundred years ago. This is just a little different chemistry, but they are still very, very top quality finishes. Also, since you're curing these things instantly, you don't get any kamikazes. You know, that fly, that mosquito, that freaking little bug that decided to end his life right in the middle of the panel on your cabinet door? No, they're gone. None of those. They don't have time. And I would imagine if they got that close, they would probably be barbecued before they could hit the surface. Dust nibs? Hopefully you're running a clean shop, a clean spray booth, but yeah, there's not much time for a dust nib. I don't know if you can incinerate a dust nib with UV light. Interesting prospect. And number three, this may be important to you. You might care less, but no VOCs. If you're in California, yeah, this is probably really important to you. If you live in maybe a subdivision, someplace that has an HOA, there's covenants, you can't stink. Well, there's no odor with these. Maybe you have a neighbor that is just a, mm, you wish they weren't your neighbor. They won't even know what you're doing. No reason to complain. Do you know that neighbor comes from an old English word that means near dwelling? For some people, neighbor means nay, no, no, you can't do that. So what about us mere solo entrepreneur woodworkers? You got to consider kitchen cabinets, no rack time, refinishing one day. That sounds really good. If you're building a bunch of products, maybe home decor type things, you're selling on, on Etsy or Amazon, your own website, hopefully, arts and craft shows. Wow. What would your throughput be if you don't have to wait for something to dry? Especially if it's a little complex, like maybe furniture, where you can only do one side at a time. Maybe you actually jumped in and are starting to refinish entry doors. Whoa, 
You could take down a door, strip it, sand it, stain it, finish it, cure it, and rehang the door in one day. Huh. Furniture repair? Somebody needs a quick refinish on some end tables? Boom. One day. Kitchen table? Sand? Stain? Finish? Cure? One day. The thing's not kicking around your shop for three weeks, you know, while it dries, taking up all that space. And what are the alternatives? Well, I'm always running behind, so I use shellac. I can finish and ship a product in a day. John was telling me that there are some manufacturers, guitar manufacturers, that at 9 o'clock they start to finish their guitar bodies. Then they install the hardware and all the other components, do a final inspection and tuning, and ship the guitar before noon. Wow. Of course, we have waterborne finishes now. They're not cheap, but we have dry times measured in hours as opposed to days. This warrants some real serious consideration. What about adhesives? UV cured adhesives? Well, from my research, no, not really. We can't use UV cured adhesives in a mortise and tenon joint. Because remember the thing about UV cured is that it has to be able to be exposed to UV light. And that's not going to happen in the bottom of a mortise. Now there are adhesives that are formulated to cure either by UV light or over time. So that's possibility. But from the prices that I saw for some of these things, nah. No, it's, it's, it's not ready for prime time. Probably never will be. There's other technology that can get us instant adhesive cures. Now, one thing that you could use these for is repair. And I just did a quick search on Amazon and found the Bondic Pro UV Resin Kit Liquid Plastic Welding. Plastic Repair for Home Jewelry, Glue Adhesive Epoxy, Ultraviolet UV Glue for Glass Light. Okay, that is a SEO title if I have ever seen one for $14. And it's this little kit and it has a little bit of the, this basically plastic resin and this little light, uh, LED light that you, you know, you squeeze out some of the plastic and you hit it with the light and it's dry. It's cured. Chip repair. You have a little bit of grain tear out, something like that. I could easily see that, that replacing my my resin burn-in sticks from Mohawk that's been used for the last, like, four centuries. Hmm, that might actually have some merit. I, I, I may give that, a, give that a shot. So anyway, there's a whole list of recommendations, different websites that you can check out. Miss Jobs this week, Floating Shelves. Nope, don't have time. Honestly, don't have a desire, but maybe you do. There's that little niche there. I mean, those things have been popular for quite a while now. They're probably not going away anytime soon, so give that a shot. I'd like to make a special thank you to listeners in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, and Dahlonega, Georgia. My brother actually met his, his future bride in Dahlonega at the, uh, the ranger base there. Affiliate links, I got a paycheck from Unitel Voice, VOIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. That was episode number 19. So if you are in need of a business phone, maybe you just have your normal everyday cell phone, but you are wanting to start your business. You want to get that off the ground, but you don't want to be receiving phone calls during Thanksgiving dinner. Well, that's where you could use Unitel Voice VOIP's software solutions to give you your own business number so that they get routed one place while your friends and relatives can get in contact you normally. Check them out. Link in the show notes. Now, some of you may have been hearing about some of the uh, the dust-up involving PayPal and some of the other third-party payment systems. You may be using that on your website. Maybe you're sending invoices with that. I'm working on an episode. If you have any questions or comments or complaints about either PayPal or some of the other providers, Square, Squarespace, send me an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, your concerns on that. 
So until next episode, happy woodworking.